Hello everyone, welcome to the SPL Express. The league is currently on a bit of a break as we've concluded with the first round of matches in the season. We have Rich Roshan Rai here who's going to give us the lowdown on what he's been impressed with so far. But before that, let's have a quick look at the table to see how things stand after a first round of action. We have the Lion City Sailors who are on top of the league with 16 points. They have a four-point advantage as Tampanese and Tanjong Paga United share second and third respectively on 12 points. Albrex and Ballastia are level on points as well, while Haogang, Geelang and Young Lions make up the bottom three. So we've had a very exciting start to the 2022 season of the SPL. Roshan, which team has impressed you so far? Yeah, I think uh, for me, it it's, has to be Tanjung Paga. Just because of the expectations I think most of us had of them coming into this season's campaign and the thought that perhaps they would struggle a little bit towards the bottom half of the table. Um, but they have surprised everyone, including myself, with the spirit that they show, the determination and fight that they've shown in matches and quality uh, in attacking positions at times as well. I mean, when you think about this, this squad and what their strengths, where they really lie, it's that collective fight that collective spirit that they have um, and they were unbeaten for like what six rounds of the league uh, and then finally that uh, came to an end against the Lion City Sailors what do you think uh, the backroom staff have done right with this Jaguar side because they've not had m too many changes from last season yeah there's that stability at the club right with uh, Hasrin still in there Alam Shah still in there as well and you know they've added to the backroom staff with the uh, Indra Sharan coming in so they have that stability they do have uh, good knowledge in terms of tactics and in terms of how they want to set the side up and even the players who have come in uh, players like Shugic for example you know if have, have come in and, and been so impressive you know contributing in terms of goals and chances um, that they've created Nishiguchi for me has been another outstanding player for them Rashuto's return I think has been so impressive important he breaks up the play so well for them in midfield and he's a real fighter helps with the spirit of the squad and gets other players in and around uh, him as well to sort of go let's all fight together for this one now talk the sailors they have the quality they are the top of the league right now <laughs> but we're still out is this the best we've seen from them no and that's a scary thing that's a scary thing about the Lion city sailors right because the top of the league they've conceded the fewest number of goals in the competition and yet, when we've spoken about them in previous weeks on this show and elsewhere, uh, we, we don't think that this is the best that we've seen from the Lion City Sailors. So it's scary for the rest of the league. Imagine what <laughs> they'll do once they start flying, once they get a real rhythm and a run of games going forward they together. They seem to be, have gotten a bit of momentum with the Champions League campaign going on right That's now. That's right. I think that, that has helped them as well. You know, I think uh, the fact that they've gone away and they're playing in this higher level elite club competition and they're putting in some good strong performances uh, in, in, in that AFC Champions League campaign you know I think they've done Singapore football proud they've done themselves proud it's starting to come together now as players get that run of games get that fitness match fitness and that match sharpness and that togetherness uh, under their belt Quick one about another team who've, who've impressed with their play but who are not quite there yet Tampines Rovers Wow, I mean, Tampanese Rovers, again, yeah, you say, uh, this is another side that we say not quite there in terms of their overall balance in the team, but they're second uh, in the league after uh, seven uh, matches, which is, I think, really great to, to see of them. And this is another side that when you think back to, to last season, the issues that they had in the second half of their campaign, coming back from the AFC Champions League, which was disastrous for them, and it really had an effect. It took a toll on the team. Uh, but it's a credit to the work that they've done in the off-season. It's a credit to the work that they've done with, uh, with Gavin in there, the work that he's done with the squad and the players who have sort of bounced back from that I mean still with Tampanis I think the criticism uh, of this side is that defensively they are still very loose and I think they concede far too many opportunities and far too many goals to opposition but there's such an exciting side to watch you know with the ball that flow that they have in those attacking areas you get players interchanging positions you have such good technical quality in that team you know, Mehmedovic has been superb for them. Nakamura, another one. Kopitovic up front, banging in the goal. So, Tampanese overall, great with the ball. Uh, they just need to work on that defensive aspect of it, the balance in that side. Let's talk about individuals right now. Which players, or which player, rather, has lit up the league this, this season for you? This was a quite a difficult one to pick because, you know, yeah, you look at the charts and you see goals and assists and you tend to sort of veer towards that because those are the difference makers. But there have also been contributions in terms of players in the goalkeeping, defensive, midfield department. However, having said that the players up top are the difference makers, I've looked at that and I, and I have to go with uh, Boris Kopitovic because 11 goals, 3 assists, superb, superb start to the season. And I mean, Tampanese wouldn't be where they are without his goals, without his contribution. That's 14 goals contributions uh, and Tampanese have, uh, I think, scored 21 this season. So that's something like 66% of Tampanese's goals have come 
thanks to Boris Kapitovic. So yeah, I think Boris Kapitovic for me, the one that stands out. His variety of his goals as well. He can finish in the box. He can finish outside the box. He can do it on his own uh, with some of his uh, with some of the shots that he's taken in the league this season. For me, he's been the one that's absolutely stood out in the league. Well, arguably, you mentioned Kapitovic and how important he is to Tampanese. But some would argue that Nakamura is more instrumental to the Stampini side. Yeah, I mean, you could say that as well. You know, I think, again, it, it, it just comes down to how you sort of perceive that, how you want to justify your selections. And for me, I think, you know, the, the players further up the pitch, they score the goals, they win you matches. They are the ones who, who make the difference. But Nakamura has, I think, with his role, the difference in his role this season is that he's been allowed to push forward a bit more. Uh, and I think that's seen his assist numbers go up as well with five assists uh, in the league this season. So that's great to see. He also helps to change matches for Tampa in terms of his in, uh, individual ability to take players on. I think that has contributed as well to, to Tampanese's uh, good run. Well, you, you talked about justifying selections. We've asked you to select the <laughs> best 11 of the first round so far. And here it is. So you've gone with Hassan Sani in goal, Akari Abdullah, Haris Harun, Sakuma and Omori at the back. It's Taniguchi, Nakamura, Shugic and Nishiguchi in midfield. And up top, you have Kapitovic and Kim Shinook. So a very interesting choice, Roshan. Let's start with that back line. Actually, let's start with goalkeeper first. Hassan Sani, clear choice? Yeah, clear-cut choice. I think, you know, he's been the standout goalkeeper. Um, I was thinking about Zafan at Tanjung Paga as well. You know, he, he would have been perhaps a decent shout. Uh, but yeah, I think Hassan Sani, for me, is has been uh, Mr. Consistent for the Lion City Sailors. If there's one player in that Lion City Sailors side, who on the defensive front of it has been consistent through all the seven matches and, and hasn't really put a foot wrong, I would say uh, it's Hassan Sani. So he deserves uh, that spot in goal. And in the heart of defence, we've got with Harris and Sakuma. Yeah. Sakuma playing for Geelang. Geelang hot, have blown hot and cold this season. But yes. what has he brought to this Geelang team and to the league as well? Yeah, I think this perhaps viewers out there might have a bit of an issue with and my justification for it with Sakuma is that I think individually he has been very good for, for Geelang I think uh, you know he's handled himself as an individual very well yeah Geelang as a team as a whole haven't been able to string those results and that consistency together but him I think in central defence gives them a bit more composure gives them that calm he's good with the ball uh, and out of possession as well I think you know he reads the game well Harris is another one who some people might think really you know maybe there's been a few question marks about him but I think he's been again very consistent I think he's been strong in the one-on-one -on -one situations um, and he's handled himself well in those positions. This is someone who has been converted into a central defender as well and he has played every minute of the Lion City Sailors matches in, uh, in round one so far. So Harris uh, gets a nod. Uh, let's talk about Akari quickly as well. Yes, this was a, a, a difficult one because I was thinking of between Akari and uh, Chris Van Huysen uh, in that space at, at right back because I think both of them have been good in getting forward and uh, making good contributions to the attacking departments of their respective sides. Van Huysen has got himself a couple of goals. Um, Akari has picked up a couple of assists. So I, I've just decided to go with Akari in there because I, I, I just think, you know, he maybe gives Tanjung Paga a bit more balance and also, you know, him coming in from the Lion City Sailors. There were some question marks from Akari himself, you know, I know on social media where he was wondering whether he should continue on with his career. He's found a good club uh, that is giving him the minutes and I think he's been pretty satisfied with uh, his performances in, uh, in round one of the SPL so far and justifiably so and hopefully he'll, he'll be able to continue that. In midfield, they've gone with Taniguchi as well for Ballastia. Hmm. It's been a very bright spark for Ballastia who've had an up and down season so far. Yeah, Taniguchi I think has to be in and he was one of my favourite players from last season. I think he's continued that with the weaker Ballester Kalsa side. I mean, uh, no disrespect to them, but they'd be in a lot of trouble without the, the Japanese uh, trio of uh, Taniguchi, uh, Kondo and uh, Hoshino. Uh, and Taniguchi has to be in there. Five assists uh, this season. That's joint top of the Singapore Premier League. He's got two goals as well. So seven goal contributions for a Ballester Kalsa side of scored 12 so far this season. So I think they'd be in a lot of trouble without uh, his contribution from midfield. He's a quality player. Uh, he sees, he, he's able to pick out a pass, he's able to uh, split defences and he's able to get into the box as well to finish off opportunities. So Taniguchi for me was, uh, was, was quite an easy one to, to put inside. Up top, Kapitovic and Shinook. Uh, no, no, Zuzul, no Sime Zuzul. Sime Zuzul, yeah. Sime Zuzul, I mean, really, he was close to, to, to getting in there. But again, if you just judge strikers based on their goals, Shinook has scored more and uh, uh, Kapitovic, of course, you know, he's been my, my player of the first round. You want to jump in with yes, a question? Yes, I want to again? jump in with a question because we, we, we've spoken about Shinu's goals, but his overall play, what have you made of it, of his start to the, his SPL career? Again, this is another thing that's like a bit strange because he's another one of those Lion City Sailors players who you say, 
and uh, he himself has admitted that he hasn't been his best and yet he scored six goals so <laughs> what's going to happen when he starts playing at his best when it really starts clicking for them uh, I, I think the reason why I've picked him is you might say his overall game hasn't been the best but still when you give him the service in the box he's shown that he can finish off chances he's such a good player in the penalty area so that's why I've, 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 I've picked him for this particular team but look Zuzul could easily have been there as well and he's another one that could easily justify deserves a place in this uh, in this uh, team of the, the first round I've got one more name for you Go Joel on. Chu who's, who's been very yeah, impressive for yeah, the Young Lions yeah. this season he has been again another on the individual level has been very good um, and it's not there's no fault of his that he perhaps hasn't been able to contribute the numbers that we see from some of these other players right in terms of assists in terms of goals but as an individual, he certainly has stood out. It's just that he's playing for the Young Lions, the side that uh, play some good football at times, but in certain situations, they do struggle to just get those results across the line. But, you know, I tell you what, it's really encouraging that we're able to pick out these local names and these local players coming through and these young players as well. And hopefully, the development continues on. I think that's, that's really encouraging. What's really encouraging is the fact that it was really difficult for me to sort of pick out these 11 players because there's so much quality across the league. I mean, I love to hear from people out there in the comments what their teams are they think this is easy i love for them to, to give a go well do drop in the comments if you agree erosion and what your best 11 is and we have another point of contention here <laughs> we're going to go into the goals so far of the round uh you've picked up two goals which you think uh were the best of the round so far and it's not moritz's goal yes. the halfway line strike which were the goals controversial you up? Yeah. right that i've not gone with moritz <laughs> um look it's a great goal moritz has won and we have to to give it a mention uh but I think shots from halfway for a professional footballer quite common in that sense. You know what I mean? There's no real pressure in that situation. Shots, but not a goal though. Shots, not a goal. But I think, you, I think what, 80, 90% of, of professional players, you'd expect them to be able to hit a target from halfway line. But it's such a goal that made Beckham though. If you were <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it looks spectacular. It is, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It is a good goal. I'm not critical of, of Moritz and I think he, he deserves that award. But just for me, my personal picks would have been I probably would have looked at Kapitovic's goal against Haugang as one of them because I think that one is a more difficult skill to execute I think it requires a lot of technical quality Kapitovic's goal and from that position as well it's it's really low sort of expected goals if you're into those numbers it's really low he's got a defender on him he's got to spin away from Nazrul I think it was at that time take it down spin away from the defender and you're still on the edge of the box um, in the corner and the way he was just able to sort of whip it into the far poles with power and with accuracy I think for me that's a goal that really stands out and then you look at Sime Zuzul as well it's another goal that I should really <laughs> pick out here because this is just individual brilliance right this is a game against Albrex it's Geelang at this point in time the timing of this goal as well they're struggling to get themselves into this game they're struggling to break down Albrex Zuzul's like I'm just going to do it all myself he gets it he spins away from like three markers turns away from his defenders drives towards the box and as he's falling over he's still got bodies in front of him as he's falling over he's still able to put it in the back of the net superb superb goal so for me goal of the round Sime Zuzul that solo goal against Elbrex Nigata well we'd love to hear from you guys as well do drop in the comments whether you agree Roshan on his goal of the round so far as well as his best 11 for now we'll leave you with some of the outstanding goals from the SPL season so far till next time goodbye And the engine goes along, Raihan! Supervision by Raihan Stewart! Takes a shot, and he does find the back of the net. That's a brilliant strike from Chris Van Huysen. Again, right foot, left foot, no issue. Kapitovic, allowed to turn on his left foot, and that is a fantastic goal from Kapitovic. Can you stop him? Well, he loves his bicycle kicks, doesn't he? Yes! Right back in this, and two apiece against Haldan, who just cannot seem to finish. They have finished that one! Zyphon Lee's on Corona's goal line. This is a dramatic end. Does well to find the space, take the shot, and what a goal that is! Boris Kapitovic, out of nothing, scoring the opening goal.
great turn from Zuzu. Zuzu is doing all on his own right now and still gets a shot away. What a fantastic goal that is. Well, Simi Zuzu was crowded out in a sea of orange shirts, but that didn't matter.